It's a lazy afternoon. The very first time I met him was at a record date, a singer named Lucy Reed. And I was introduced to him, how do you do, how do you do, that's all it was. I became interested in his music with the recording kind of blue. That's what started me. It was the summer of 62, but I believe that's when it was. Bill was floundering without management. I induced Helen to become Bill's manager. Eugene Lees brought us together. And I told her, you've got to come and hear this guy. And he took me down to the Village Vanguard one night, and that was it. Gene and I were together for many years. And it became an impassioned love affair. I think he was the first writer to really write in depth about Bill when he was editor of Downbeat. They said, this guy's a major artist, and I decided I wanted to put him on the cover. I really didn't have any aspirations to be a record producer because it was so much of a, a man's world. So, so that the Town Hall album, I actually <coughs> produced that. It was right after that that uh, I sure. became officially yes. his producer. When he signed with Verve Records, we, and Creed Taylor was the producer, I was always there. And Creed spoon-fed me. He, he brought me along. He said, you're, you're a producer. By the time Creed left in 1966, I was already producing most of the records, but Creed's, Taylor, Creed's name was still appearing. She was very strong and very good for a Bill. He'd have been dead without her. I don't think Bill would have had the career he did without her. In the early 60s, that may have been the last anybody had ever heard of Bill Evans without my mom, yeah. In the musician's world, everybody knew about Bill Evans. It, was, it felt like I was recording with a symphony. The mutual respect. Bill used to talk about Tony all the time. Uh, they had this great feeling for, for each other. Well, and one day I picked up the phone, called Jack and said, I have an idea. And Bill said, keep all the groupies away f from the record date. You know, just, just you and I come in, you know, and Helen. They both said yes immediately. I mean, it was the fastest okay I think I ever got. Elaine was so, so tuned in to Bill. Elaine was, was his strength as much as she could be, uh, being a, a partner heroin addict with him. They were together for 12 years. They were a devoted couple. I, they were together when I met Bill, and they had been together for a couple of years, I think. My mother and Elaine were really, really tight. She became my closest friend. She was brilliant brilliant woman, but her life was Bill. Elaine Evans was there at the Vanguard. Elaine turned me on to the stories of Franz Kafka. Uh, she was wonderful. Talk about an attentive person. She was so attentive to me as a youngster. We had come back from Japan. For, and he was booked in California and he met this other woman, Nanette, N-E-N-E-T-T-E. -E -E. He's in the lane. Just wasn't able to handle it. It was at college when my mother called me and told me when Elaine committed suicide. She killed herself. She had no life but Bill. She just, she was a very fragile person. Brilliant, but very fragile. Du pianiste Bill Evans.
My mom was totally centered on Bill. She's producing Bill, Bill's albums. My experience with Bill, with big record companies, was unique. Bill had a quality about himself as a man. It was almost like an aura. He, he was not arrogant, he was the kindest, sweetest man in the world, but people did not mess around with Bill. And whatever album she was working on, you know, listening to Take After Take, in our household, Bill Evans was the religion. He was treated with the utmost respect by the record companies. Awe is a better word.